Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking you through all the build options for your Necron kill team using the Shadow Vault's book and instruction guidelines. Hyrotech Circle kill team is a great update for the Necrons, and there's a few options to put this kill team together, so you're going to have some different ways to do it. I'll go through those different ways with you, so hopefully that's going to help you to put together your perfect kill team, and I'll also talk through some of the options I decided on for my own team. There's some potential here to use models you might already have, which is really cool, because then all you need are the rules and you can get playing in no time. Now, Shadow Vaults are sold out pretty much everywhere, very hard to get hold of, but if you want to get some of the models, please check out Firestorm Games. I'll put a link in the description down below. With that link, you can save up to 20% on all your hobby products there, including the Necrons and lots of other games too. Right, let's get started and we'll use the Shadow Vaults book first and you can see from page 22 onwards you're going to learn all about the circles of the Cryptex and the Hyrotex circle kill teams. This is some great narrative to give you a good idea of how the Necrons are going to fit in with the kill team. And here you can see some nice images too, some brilliant paint references if you wanted to go that way. You've also got the name and demeanor tables, all the squad quirks and all that stuff you'll need for your campaign narrative play as well. Then as we move forward to page 51, you'll see the circle kill team and this is going to tell you how many operatives you can include in it and what type of operatives can be included. So you can see here you can have a cryptech, which will be a chronomancer, psychomancer or technomancer and that will be your leader for the kill team. As you'll see when we go through the instruction booklet later on, you're only going to get one option included in the Shadow Vaults box set. So you're only going to get the Technomancer. So if you buy the set, you've got those models. This is your first easy choice. You've only got one of these leader options. Next, you can choose one Plasmacite Accelerator and one Plasmacite Reanimator. Those models are both included. So again, another easy choice if you want to include those. Then we can choose five Hyrotech Circle operatives, and we can choose from the following list. Apprentech, Deathmark, Immortal, Despotech, and Immortal Guardian. But there's only so many of these that we can include. Some of them are going to come with different weapon options, like the Gauss Blaster Bayonet, and then the Tazla Carbine and Bayonet, whereas others are going to just be fixed, and you can't choose any weapon options for them. It also tells us here that other than Deathmark and Immortal Guardians, you can only include each operative once. So the Apprentech and the Immortal Despotech, you can only take one of each of those, but the Deathmarks, you could take five if you wanted to, or up to five, and the Immortal Guardians, you can also take up to five. At the top of the page, you can see the archetype for the Hyrotech Circle kill team will be Recon and Security, and these will affect the TAC Ops you can choose. Now you know how many different operatives you can include. It's a really good idea to read through the TAC Ops, have a look at the abilities, and then go through the strategic ploys and the tactical ploys just to get a flavour of how the kill team will work together. And then start working through the data cards, looking at which ones stand out to you and your style of play. You might also just want to go for the rule of cool. And if you like the look of, say, the Chronomancer model, for example, then why not go with that for your leader? But just note that the unique actions and the cryptic actions and abilities are going to be different between these different leaders. I like the Chronomancer. I think it looks like a really cool model. And I like the cryptic actions affecting the time and things like that. But again, this model isn't included in the set. So that's where you're going to have to flick over and look at the abilities for the Technomancer. So yeah, if you don't have lots of different models, for example, you might not have the Psychomancer in your collection or the Chronomancer, you're going to have to go with the Technomancer with the models in this set. So in that case, this is your easiest decision and you know you're going to definitely be building this model. Don't let that put you off though, because the Technomancer has got some great cryptic actions and their weapons are all right as well. So not too bad at all, but the Technomancer's really focusing on healing, lost wounds, really playing a supportive role amongst the kill team. So he's going to be crucial, whereas the, the Chronomancer is really affecting time a lot more and hindering the enemy. Now you've chosen your leader, it's time to look at the other data cards. So we've got the Plasmacite Accelerator and the Plasmacite Reanimator here. Now in total, there's going to be eight operatives in the kill team. 
We've got the leader already. We can only take five Hyrotech circle operatives. So the plasma site accelerator and reanimator are pretty much going to have to be included in the kill team. So that's another easy one. These are going to have to play a part. So you're going to be building and playing those no matter what other models you choose. Then you've got the Apprentech. So this is one of the options from the five operatives. Now you don't have to play this one. So this depends whether you like the ability, unique action, and you think it will play a good part in your kill team. I like the death mark, so I'm going to be building a couple of those. These are hard hitters, hitting on twos, really good with AP1, heavy, mortal wound one. I like them. They're suiting my style of play, so I know that there's a good chance there's going to be a number of death marks in there to go along with the other three. The Apprentech, I think, is quite funny, so I'll be including that too. As we turn the page, now we've got the other two options, the Immortal Guardian and the Immortal Despotech. Have a look at these data cards as well, see what springs out to you, what will suit your playstyle. You're allowed up to five Immortal Guardians, so none or up to five, and then you can only take one Immortal Despotech. Now the Despotech and the Guardian have got the same weapon stats, but the Despotech gets an extra unique action, so you might as well include one of them if you're going to be playing Guardians. There's some pretty easy choices, I think, to be made. There's not too much variety, but once you've decided and had a good look through the data cards, it's worth looking at the equipment and then having a look at the other parts that are going to affect the game once you start playing the narrative side of things. Now we've looked through the data cards, gone through all the info, you should have a good idea of the sort of models you want to include and what operatives you want to include in your kill team. So let's grab the instruction booklet and we'll work our way through and I'll show you how the instruction guide you through putting them together and again which options you have for the sprues included in this set. Much of this booklet is devoted to the Kazakins, they're going to get lots of pages but now we're on to the pages we need for the Necrons and so there you can see there's the eight put together for the kill team with the recommendations they've gone through here but here's the first one the leader the model that's included there's only one way to put this together no variations so nice and easy that's an uh, easy one you're definitely going to be building that now once you move on to the Apprentech and then the rest of the models for the Hyrotech circle operatives you're going to be having to make some decisions because you're going to be using the legs for the Apprentech that you would otherwise use for Immortals or Death Marks. So this is where you need to be careful and plan a little bit. If you want to use an Apprentech, I would say build that first. And then once you've done that, you know you'll have four sets of legs to then give to the Death Marks and the Immortals or that Despotech as well. So you've got one sprue that really needs to do the work for you here. And here you've got the Despotech. You can give two different weapons. So you've got the two options at the top there. And again, when you play games like this, there's no reason why you can't proxy the weapons. You could play it WYSIWYG if you wanted to, but I think I'd go for rule of cool. As long as the, the opponent's happy that they know what weapon you're giving and that's what you use throughout the game, then there's really no problem to use either weapon. It doesn't have to be WYSIWYG. You can certainly choose what you like the best. So the leader, that's a nice easy one, but that one big sprue and the additional sprue that comes with it will be where you make most of your decisions. For the Plasmacyte Accelerator and Plasmacyte Reanimator, they're going to come from the smaller sprue. Nice and easy, that's not going to affect any of the other models, so you might as well go ahead and build them. So to start with, build the leader and build the two Plasmacytes. Once you've done that, you can then make up your mind what you're going to do for the other five operatives. If you like the Apprentech, definitely build that one first. And then you've got a choice between the Deathmark, the Despotech and the Guardians. That's now covered the instruction booklet. So I thought I would get my models out and just show you what I've built and my thoughts and how I went about putting together my kill team. So let's start with the leader. So we've got the Technomancer. You're going to get the two small sprues and that base that come in the set. And then from that, you've just got one way of building. Nice and easy, easy decision. I've built the Technomancer. Now, this is one I've got from the Imperium Magazine collection. So he's all assembled and primed already. So nice and easy. And now I've just got to decide how I'm going to paint him. Look out for a painting video coming soon because I'm going to be doing different ones than I did when I painted my Necrons previously. So I might go for a different colour scheme for these. So easy decision number one. 
I've also got the Chronomancer. Now this is an awesome model. I actually like the look of this one better and I quite like the rules. So this is going to be a fun one to include. I'm going to paint them all up to fit in with Kill Team because I think I'll be playing them in Kill Team a lot more than I will in 40k. So that's a way to go now. I'm going to have these two options as my leaders so I can have some different play styles. That's going to be fun to mix it up and try out some new moves with each one and see how that affects the rest of the team. Now on to the Plasmacite Accelerator. This one came on the bonus sprue that come in the set for the Necron. So you get the double sprue and then you get this little one and all the parts you're going to need for the Plasmacite Accelerator are on there. Again, you've got to include it. So easy choice, just build it and then work your way through the rules, seeing how it's going to play in the game. It's on a tiny base, 25 mil, but you can see it's going to stand out quite a lot. So just be aware of that in the game. It's certainly going to be difficult to hide. Here it is up against one of the objective pieces from the new set. So you can see it's definitely going to be poking out, but the chances are this is going to have a conceal order most of the time anyway, because, you know, it's not going to do a huge amount of damage in battle. And this really is about giving some buffs to the rest of the kill team. Now on to the Plasma Site Reanimator. Again, you have to build this one. So nice and easy from that small sprue. This is going to play a big part, I think, in the kill team. Here it is, the sprue it came from. Uh, but yeah, an important little model, this one. You probably want to keep this hidden as well. All about buffing those other kill team operatives. I went for the Apprentech next. I thought, I've got to build this. Such a cool character. I love the idea that he's never going to get promoted. It just seems really funny. But you'll have to use the legs from that double sprue, which is going to take away your option to have a death mark or immortal. So here he is, all built. I've primed him already. Really looking forward to getting these painted and trying out their rules. So he's going to join those other models. It's actually got quite a lot of character. One criticism I've had of the Necrons in the past is that they don't have a lot of character. But I think this guy's quite funny. And I think if you can put that personality of him being frustrated because he's got to potentially spend thousands of years as the apprentice to the main leader. I just think that's really bringing them to life and giving them a lot of character. Now onto the death marks. Now from this set, I would have chosen to build two and they're gonna take them from this double sprue. But I do have five built already from the Imperium magazine. So I've got five if I want to, I could have that choice to mix it up. You'll also have a few heads on that small sprue. But if I only built them from this set, I would probably choose to build two. So I would take two of the models from that sprue and build two death marks. I really like the Synaptic Disintegrator. Four shots hitting on twos, AP1, heavy with a mortal wound one, really appeals to my style of play. And I think these will be great to give some cover to the other models and also get some buffs maybe from the Plasma Sight Accelerator. Yeah, these two are great. Really like these. They're probably my favourite um, models from the Necrons because they're kind of snipers and I like snipers in any game. Right, now we're on to the Immortal Despotech. And so you might as well build this because you could use it as a Despotech or an Immortal once it's built. Again, as long as your opponent knows exactly what you're using, no problem at all. But I'm going to use this model. This is the first model we got in the Imperium magazine. And I think it just has a lot more character. It's more dominant and it really does stand out as a unique looking character. And I've got it built already, so why not use it? Here it is compared to an Immortal Guardian. It's a little bit bigger, but I think that's going to help point it out on the battlefield. Of course, it's going to stand out more. But I don't care about that. I just think it looks cool and it will you know, have a, a very clear definition between the two models. Now, when I'm building the Immortal Guardian next, I'll be using the final set of legs from the sprue. And now I've given him a different weapon. I've gone for the Tesla Carbine here. So I like it. It looks cool. Differentiates him from the Despotech. But if I want to, I could proxy it as a Gauss Blaster and use that stat line instead, which I probably will do because I like the AP1 more than the Splash on this case and the amount of damage it can dish out. When you've put together your kill team, you're going to find you'll have a lot left on the, the sprue here because you've got those five models. You're only going to potentially build two Guardians, two Death Marks. You're going to have all those weapons spare, so maybe use them for kit bashing later on. But one thing I do like about this set is the potential to use the models you've already got. This little dude comes in another set from the Necrons, so you could certainly proxy that. It's a little bit bigger than the 
other plasma site that's included in the box set but it doesn't really matter again why not use it if you've got it already then you only need to get the rules from a video or online and you're good to go so i think the necrons are going to be a good option a lot of people are going to have all these models you can see here there's a good chance you've got all the different variants already especially the leaders if you've been collecting the magazine the imperium magazine then you're going to have some death marks or immortals as well and again you can proxy different models for them no problem as long as everyone playing the game is happy. I will be doing another video in the future where I break down the rules for the Necron kill team, this new Hyrotech circle, and so look out for that be coming very soon and I'll go through exactly how they play but this is really just to give an overview of what you can build with the models included and I'm pretty happy it's a shame that all of these weren't different because the set did have that duplicated terrain so it would have been good to have two brand new kill teams but I think what they've done here especially with the Apprentec and those two plasma site there that's enough and then you know, you've also got the option to use models you've already got rather than even buying this set. And with it being so hard to get hold of now, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's worked out okay. So you just got to find the rules, use the models you got, and you're good to go. I hope you found this video helpful and it gave you a good idea of how you can put together a new Necron kill team using the Hyrotech Circle rules included in the Shadow Vaults box set. And if you've got any questions, please add them in the comments section below. Also, let me know what choices you would make if you were putting together a kill team using these options. I'd love to hear what you think. If you'd like to find out more about Shadow Vaults, check out my unboxing video. I've also done a video about the terrain features and there's loads more content to come, including the Kazakins and more. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button. It makes a huge difference. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit the notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>